Okay, so in this video, I just want to talk about Taylor polynomials, or Taylor series and Maclaurin series, and just about, you know, what do they do exactly? So, I'm going to run through a lot of things quickly in this video, so if this is the very first video you're watching on Taylor polynomials, the first little bit probably won't make too much sense, but the last part will give you an intuitive idea of what they're, what they're doing. Um, hopefully you've seen some of these formulas, and again, maybe maybe you've seen these ex series expansions, but it still doesn't quite make sense. What's going on here? So let's just look at a specific example. So the idea is you can use a pat what's known as a power series representation for for certain functions, and what you can do is you can rewrite that function in terms of an infinite polynomial. So okay, so here's the kind of the technical nitty gritty. It says if a function f of x has a power series representation of x equals a, this is the formula. Maybe you've seen this, maybe you haven't. Again, this is the intuitive idea is it turns out there's a way for certain functions, again, to represent them as an infinite polynomial. And it says if they have an infinite polynomial representation, this is going to be the formula that's going to help you compute them. So it says, you know, okay, so if a equals 0, if we let a equals 0, we call this series a Maclaurin series. So this is what's known as a Taylor series. If we let a equals 0, it's called a Maclaurin series. It turns out that sine of x has a Maclaurin series representation that's valid for all values of x, and here it is. Again, you know, if you haven't seen this stuff, it may be like, where on earth is this coming from? I'm almost positive I've got a video showing how you find the Maclaurin series representation for sine of x on YouTube somewhere, so feel free to check it out. I also have videos showing where on earth this, this initial formula comes from as well. So if you're interested in that, feel free to make a comment. I'll try to point you in the right direction. But again, I'm assuming maybe you've seen this stuff, but you still don't really know what's going on. So... Okay, so if you expand out, you know, so, so this formula, it goes from n equals 0 to infinity. Notice if you plug in n equals 0, we would have negative 1 to the 0. We would get x to the first power over 1 factorial. This would just simply reduce to x. If you substitute in the term n equals 1, so this is if you let n equals 0 in the formula, you'll just get all of this will reduce to just x. If you plug in n equals 1, notice you'd have a negative. There's our negative. If you plug in n equals 1, you'll get x to the third power. There's our x to the third power. And if you plug in n equals 1, you'll get 3 factorial. So this is going to be our term when we let n, equal, n equals 1. The next term you'll get when you plug in n equals 2, n equals 3, etc., etc., etc. So the idea is, again, it says that sine x can be approximated using these. This is what's known as a Taylor polynomial. Okay? So this would be the infinite Taylor polynomial. The more terms that you use here, the better the approximation is going to be. So you could do a really crude approximation by saying sine x is roughly equal to x. Okay, that's just the very first term that you get out, so it's probably not going to be the best approximation. An even better approximation would be to use the first two terms, x minus x to the third over 3 factorial. An even better approximation would be to use the first, you know, the first three terms. And the idea, as you use more and more terms, the approximations are going to get better and better and better. So let's take a look graphically at what's going on here, just so you can get a feel for what's happening as these terms increase. Okay, so again, let's try to get an intuitive idea of what's going on here. So here I've got my graph. This is y equals sine x that I, that I have here. Notice this, if you look on the, the second thing here, this was the, what we said was going to be the Taylor series expansion for uh, y equals sine x. And what I'm going to do is, so a just represents you know, how far out we're going in the, in the series to approximate. So recall that we said the very first approximation, we said that you can approximate sine x just by using y equals x. So let's do that here. Let's... Uh, there's the graph of y equals x. So again, hey, you know, I guess it kind of does approximate sine x. It approximates sine x just for a little bit right around zero. Let's look at the, um, the first two terms. We said you could approximate sine x with x minus x to the third over 3 factorial. 
where there's going to be the graph of x minus x to the third over 3 factorial. So that's a, certainly a, a better approximation, right? It's hugging, it's hugging sine x for even longer. We said you could approximate sine x even better by using x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. So there's that graph. That's even better. And again, that's going to correspond from... So here we're going from n equals 0 up to 2. There's our zeroth term, our first term, and our second term. Let's look at what happens as we just add more and more and more terms. So here I'm going to let a get really big. It's going to go up to 20. So eventually we're going to have a, a pretty big polynomial. So let's just watch what happens. So, so let's see, there's y equals x. And... So there's y equals x, there's x minus x to the third over 3 factorial. Notice as we include more and more terms, our approximating polynomial, which is the one in purple, it's staying closer and closer to the correct graph. You know, again, we're trying to model here y equals sine x. And as we include more and more terms, hey, it's becoming a better and better approximation for longer and longer and longer. So this is the whole idea of these, these Taylor polynomials. As you include more and more and more terms, it's going to give you a better and better and better approximation to the actual function that you're trying to model. So let me pause this here. So this is when we had up to 20 terms. Notice the polynomial is really modeling sine x quite well for a long time. So again, this is the basic idea. I just wanted you to see it, and hopefully this makes things a little bit clearer as to what these Taylor polynomials are actually doing.